premature rupture of membranes, fetal presentations other than cephalic, placenta previa, intrauterine tumors preventing the presenting part from engaging, a small fetus, CPD preventing firm engagement, polyhydramnios, and multiple gestation. The incidence is about 0.5% of cephalic births but can rise as high as 10% or higher with breach or transverse lice. For the assessment phase, assess the woman to be transferred to the nearest consultant unit or hospital for delivery and assess the client's ability to follow instructions. Good morning! So today, I will demonstrate the emergency management for the prolapse of the umbilical cord. So first, I will gather all the items that I will need on this procedure. So for the internal examination, we have here clean gloves and lubricant. And for the vaginal delivery, we have here two sterile gloves, one sweet forceps, one mayo scissors, one needle holder, sterile operating sponge, one urinary catheter, one placental basin, one syringe with needles, one chromic tube, two percent lidocaine, and then cotton balls with betadine. So this procedure is important for easy accessibility for the inspection of external genitalia, vagina, and cervix. Good morning, ma'am. I am Angelica, your student nurse for today. May I know your name? Thank you. So, I will do an internal examination to assess the progress of your labor. Is that okay? It is important to identify the client, introduce yourself, and explain the procedure to obtain client's cooperation and work simultaneously. Ma'am, so you will be positioned on the examination table to check for the progress of your labor. Okay, so let me assist you, ma'am. Thank you. How are you feeling? Okay, that's good to know. Are you comfortable your, with your position right now? Thank you. Three positions are employed for internal examination. These are dorsal recumbent, sims position, and niches position. The aforementioned positions are made best as to expose the gynecologic area to be examined. Position depends on patient's capability and examiner's preferred position. Ma'am, I will put the drape on you and will expose the part that I only need to assess. Always respect the client's modesty and to provide privacy. After I assess the progress of labor, wash hands and put on examination gloves. This is to protect myself from contracting gynecological diseases caused by highly infective organisms. Ma'am, while I insert my two fingers, kindly take a deep breath while I do the examination. If I see a cord protruding on the vagina, I will handle it carefully. On inspection, the cord may be visible at the vulva and to assess the cord for pulsations. Okay, so I will now be assessing the heart rate of your baby by putting stethoscope on your abdomen. Don't worry, this will not hurt you or even the baby. Just relax, okay? Cord prolapse is first discovered only after the membranes have ruptured. When the fetal heart rate is discovered to be unusually slow, 
or a variable deceleration fetal heart rate pattern suddenly becomes apparent on a fetal monitor. The rule-out cord prolapse always assess the fetal heart sounds immediately after the membranes have ruptured, whether this occurs spontaneously or amniotomy. If you are in a CMOC facility, report the findings to the obstetrician for emergency cesarean section. But if you are in the BMOC facility, the following procedures are the emergency management for the prolapse of the umbilical cord. Ma'am, I will assist you in an HS position. Take a deep breath and do not bear down if you have the urge to do so. Chest position and uses gravity to shift out the fetus out of the pelvis. Next is to elevate the presenting part by filling the urinary bladder by inserting a catheter. If the decision to deliver the interval is likely to be prolonged, particularly if it involves ambulance transfer, elevation through bladder filling may be more practical. Bladder filling can be achieved quickly by inserting the cut end of an intravenous giving set into a Foley catheter. Ma'am, I will be inserting a catheter into your urinary bladder by a sterile fluid to help in reducing the compression of the prolapse cord. Mom, in 3, 2, 1, take a deep breath. Okay, just relax. So let's assume that this contains sterile IV fluid. The catheter should be clamped once 500 to 750 ml IV fluid have been inserted. It is essential to empty the bladder again just before any delivery attempt, be it vaginal or cesarean section. Okay, ma'am, so I will put my glove hand into your vagina to push the head of your baby upward and take a deep breath when you have the urge to bear down. It is important to not remove your fingers until you arrive at the operating room or as per instructed by the obstetrician. Elevation of the presenting part is thought to relieve pressure on the umbilical cord and prevent mechanical vascular occlusion. Manual elevation is performed by inserting a glove hand or two fingers in the vagina and pushing the presenting part upwards. Excessive displacement may encourage more cord to prolapse. And to prevent vasospasm, there should be minimal handling of loops of cord lying outside the vagina. Baby boy out, 1.15 p.m. If the newborn is with good cry, I will proceed with EINC. If it's not crying, then I will cut the cord and resuscitate the infant if needed. This is to protect the mother and the baby against infection and to facilitate spontaneous breathing of the infant. So after the procedure, I will remove my gloves and wash my hands for infection control. And lastly, I will document the date, the time, and the procedure to provide accurate data in the care of the client. Placenta previa, intrauterine tumors, preventing the present. Prevent. Be <laughs> unusually slow, or when the variable when the variable deceleration fetal heart rate. Mm -hmm.
for a variable deceleration fit. Okay. Uh. Core prolapse is first discovered only after the membranes have ruptured. When the fetal heart have ruptured, Cord Next is we are going to elevate the presenting part by filling the urinary bladder urinary <laughs> Thank you.